You are locked in, and I'm your host, Algernon Cash. Welcome back. Got another great episode for my audience out there. Hope everyone is doing very well. Uh, it's Christmas time, my favorite season of the year. Um, I just absolutely love Christmas, not because I get a whole lot of presents, but it's such a great time to reconnect with family and friends and share experiences and eat great food, which is something that I love to do. Um, I do want to let you know before I get started with my program today that our sponsor, is JNS Cafeteria, 5835 Samick Drive in High Point, North Carolina. And they want to do the cooking for you this holiday season. They've got all kind of holiday meals to go, bulk meals to go. Um, you can pick up, you can have them delivered. Um, so that way you can enjoy your family this Christmas season. And you don't have to spend all the time in the kitchen and cleaning up and doing all that kind of stuff. You can let JNS Cafeteria do the cooking for you. So make sure you contact them. Let them know Algernon Cash sent you and that you heard about it on Locked In. Um, so again, JNS Cafeteria 5835 Summit Drive. And so today we're going to have a really interesting conversation. I've actually been um, excited about my guests for today. I've got Lauren Desai, who's with Aperture Cinema in downtown Winston-Salem. We are going to be highlighting the top 10 must-see Christmas movies. And I'm telling you, I've already saw the list. There's some that I recognize. There's some that I don't. So I'm telling you, my audience, you're going to get a lot of value out of the day. But these are the top 10 movies that you must see this season. And a nice little other treat we're going to add. We're actually going to tell you some cool places that you can go around town and actually pair your Christmas movie up with a, a nice coffee shop or um, a nice piece of cake or a nice restaurant that you can go support this season. As you know, it is cold and um, it's getting drier and colder outside. And our restaurants, our local restaurants, are really struggling to be able to survive this COVID-19 environment that we're in. And so we are strongly encouraging you to support our local restaurant scene. Um, so you all are locked in. I'm locked in. Lauren, you're locked in. Welcome to the show. How you been doing? I've been good. Hanging in there. Uh, excited for 2021 to be around the corner. I, I think all of us are, are ready for 2020 to end. I, I don't know if everything's going to end like like magic, but I think just being in a new year is going to feel so good. I, I just talked a little bit about the, the struggles that our restaurants are going through, um, but I often, often like to remind my audience that it's not just restaurants that are having a tough time. Small business owners in general across our community right now really need a lot of support. Um, you own Aperture Cinema in downtown Winston-Salem. I know I've been to your place. I'm sure plenty of people in my audience have visited. One of the few places you can have a glass of wine while you enjoy a nice independent film. But you haven't been able to operate too much this year. So how you how you hanging in there? Uh, we've uh, we've really been hustling. I think we closed you know we closed down in March, and since then we've um, we have a, a virtual cinema online, and we've. I think released over 150 different films in that platform that um, you can enjoy from home. And that's that's been really great. Uh, we've done some drive-ins, we've done some outdoor events. We, um, we are now doing private rentals. So for a group of 10 or less, your family, your pod, you can rent out a screen at Aperture and have a safe, um, fun experience. And we'll, you know, we'll be doing that for the near future. And then, you know, hopefully things will get better and um, we'll reopen in 2021. Well, I am um, praying for you and all the small business owners around town that, that, are, that are struggling right now to get through this COVID-19 environment. Hopefully we, we've got a vaccine coming. So there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, now the virtual cinema that you all have launched, is that, is that similar to like a streaming service? Is it free? Is it a subscription? How, how does it work? Um, yeah, so you, it's all on our website and basically you pick out, these are all new release films. So these are films that we would have screened in the cinema. Um, and, and basically you go on, click on the film you're interested in and, um, hit rent now. And you, it's like you're renting, you know, from Amazon, you'll have somewhere between 24 and 72 hours to watch the film. Um, and the price ranges from $7 to $12. And you can, you know, sit at home and, and pretend that you are <laughs> in a cinema. Um, and don't forget about the cinema because we don't want people to get used to it. But for now, it's really great. And we're really excited to be able to share the pro programming that we would have, you know, would have been playing anyway. 
Well, I, I strongly encourage my audience to go do that. I'm going to make sure I go check it out my, myself because we do need to make sure that we're supporting our, our independently owned small business owners here in Winston-Salem um, that are that are pivoting and adjusting and finding ways to navigate through uh, um, an unprecedented situation. And so, um, Lauren, I know it's not ideal for you guys, but very proud of you that you've at least found some ways to, to, to stay very relevant um, in the midst of what's going on right now. But um, like Lauren said, don't forget about our cinemas. When, when they get back open, um, we got to make sure we go see a movie and, um, and socialize and do those kind of things. Aperture Cinema, they are really a downtown staple here in, in Winston-Salem. So Lauren, today I've been looking forward to this show. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal something to my audience here. We were actually supposed to record the show uh, uh, several days ago. Um, I got sick. I thought I might might have had COVID. I did not have COVID. I tested negative. Um, but Lauren was so kind to, to work with my schedule um, from that unexpected um, incident. And so today, Lauren, we're going to be talking about the top 10 movies, Christmas movies that people must see this season. And I think you've even paired them up with some nice restaurants and cafes around town um, so that they can support our local restaurant scene. So with that said, like I said before, um, I hadn't seen a lot of these. So I'm going to take my cue from you. I've got my Christmas sweater on. Um, I've got my coffee. I'm ready. So we'll kick into it. What's your What's your, is it, is it in order? Are we going number one all the way to 10 or are we going 10 to one? We're going to 10 to one. Um, 10 to one, all right. So what's number 10? So so the, first this list sort of runs the gamut of genres and time periods. And it's um, probably some films you've never heard of and some that you've seen before. But we tried to sort of really pick some films that maybe, um, you know, are, are ones you hadn't thought of before. So the, so the first on the list is It Happened on Fifth Avenue. And um, this the holiday season is all about comfort food, both physically and metaphorically. So why not pair the two together? Um, so we recommend that you dig into this film with a special grilled cheese with spinach spread, tomato basil, and soup from Acadia Foods. Um, and then you can snuggle up with this 1947 role switching class comedy. Um, it stars Charles Ruggles and um, it's just a fun, um, you know, older film that maybe, maybe you've never heard of, maybe you forgot about. Um, and a fun fact about the film that I discovered when researching is that this film has been remade twice in Hindi, um, two different decades, um, which I, you know, I always think it's funny. Uh, when a film gets made, uh, remade in India. Um, so. Well, and you, and again, the name of that film was It Happened on Fifth Street, right? Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue. Okay. And I'm, and I'm looking at like the, um, I guess this is the, uh, uh, the, the, the card they put up for the movies. And it says that um, a guy meet a guy with 50 bucks meets a gal with $50 million. Um, so it's sort of about, it's about role switching and that type of thing is what you're saying. Yeah, and you know, it's sort of an old school comedy. Uh, you know, sometimes they take a take a little bit of time to get into that sort of the way comedies used to be, but but once you're in the spirit, um, it's sort of fun and reminiscent, and um, and I think the pairing with the grilled cheese, I think, is just you know, make it especially like this would be the perfect perfect film for today. Yeah, I know. I love the pairing. I'm a huge fan of grilled cheese sandwiches with tomato basil soup. That that is a great pairing. And and again, is this a movie that we can see um, through Aperture on your online service, or how do we see the movie? So all of these films, none of these films are through Aperture. They're all just streaming on different platforms. This one is available on HBO Max. Um, so if you're getting ready to watch Wonder Woman on Christmas, you can um, you can go ahead and watch this too. Well, make sure you check that out. It happened on Fifth Avenue. That's our number 10 selection. Lauren, what's, um, num what's number nine? So number nine is another older film. It's called Bell, Book, and Candle. This one's available on the Criterion channel. Um, and we've paired this with uh, Buy Good Coffee, which is a new coffee shop on Brookstown Avenue, um, which I've, I've been going there frequently. They have great coffee. Um, and this is sort of a cool alternative to classic holiday fare. Um, it's stylish and charming and um, supernatural. It's a romantic comedy with James Stork and Kim Novak. Um, he plays a publisher, she plays a witch um, and she uses her magic to help him fall in love with her. Um, it all happens during Christmas time. So we suggest pairing that with a red velvet latte from Buy Good. Um, 
And it's really great. You, you know, you always think of James Stewart and the, the um, holiday film, It's a Wonderful Life. And so this was nice to sort of pick a different film uh, for him. If you're big fans of him, you can still enjoy him over the holidays with this one. I, I am a fan of his and I, I really do like It's a Wonderful Life. And when you sent me the description, um, and I'm, I'm obviously not an expert on old films, but I had no idea that he was even in the movie. And so I, I, that's gotta be one that I'm gonna add to my list. And I'll also um, give a testi testament to um, Buy Good Coffee. I, I recently had a good friend introduce me to the place. Um, I met the husband and wife team that moved to Winston-Salem to, to open it. And um, great family, great concept. And um, you know, hopefully people will go by and check them out. My, my mother loves red velvet. So I, I may have to at least go by and get the red velvet latte from, from my mom. Sounds good. All right, so what's uh, number eight? So number eight is probably familiar to a lot of um, kids and you know adults now um, since it's been a few years. But the, the next pick is uh, the Santa Claus. Um, and this one's available on Disney Plus. And um, we've paired this with Fiddlin' Fish. Uh, we think that um, they've done a special blend with Black Mountain Chocolate and Old Nick Williams Farm and Distillery. Um, it's, a, it's a new take on Chocolate Stout. And that so just sort of pairs well with the movie um, where Tim Burton becomes Santa Claus. Uh, and, um, you know, he, he's always good, good for, a, for a laugh. No, I, I, I love Tim Burton and I love that movie. That, that's actually certainly one I recognize. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of um, Beetlejuice. And uh, <laughs> I, um, I remember when Beetlejuice came out, I, I, I think my sister and I probably watched it uh, 30 times in one day. We just had, you know, back when you had VHS, you just, just had it going on and on and on again. I've actually never been to Fiddle and Fish, Lauren. Um, so I, I've, I've got to go check them out. I hear so many good things about them in town. Yeah, they're great. They're really great. And they've been really supportive of Aperture. We, we used to do trivia nights over there um, a couple years ago. And they're just really, um, really into being involved in the community and um, partnering with different organizations. And they're they're located at the um, on Trade Street, right? In the entertainment district. Yeah, right on the corner of Trade and MLK. Yeah, go by and check those guys out and um, make, make sure you watch Santa Claus this this season. Where are we at now? We're on number uh, seven? Yes, we are at number seven and it's another um, classic uh, holiday affair um, with Robert Meacham and Janet Lee. And we paired this with Cranky's, um, which, you know, as a, as a name of a restaurant, coffee shop, doesn't always convey warmth and good cheer, just Cranky's in the name. And that's sort of how Robert Meacham um, is not really a star you'd see in a holiday romantic comedy, um, but that's exactly what sort of this film is. And um, so we, we, we thought this was a fun pairing. Um, and th this film came up out in 1949. Um, and, and Robert Mitchum, I mean, if you look at him now, I mean, he, he's kind of like a heartthrob. And so this is just a fun sort of um, holiday romance. Yeah, and I, I absolutely, I'm a huge fan of uh, Cranky's, and um, they, they, for my audience, if you're not familiar with Cranky's, they are a staple here in Winston-Salem. Back back when the food scene downtown Winston-Salem was just still developing, um, those guys made a, an investment down there, and so um, certainly, I, I know they, are they actually back open for you to sit inside, or is it still all takeout and to go, or do you know? I don't know about inside, but I walked by and people were sitting on outside on their patio. So I know for sure that that's open. Yeah, make sure you go check those guys out. Now I'm noticing that when, I, when I'm seeing your list, I'm, I'm noticing like HBO Max and iTunes several times. Is that how some of these streaming services are attracting subscribers is by giving you access to some of these old movies that may be hard to find or locate or? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, I think that all of the, studios are getting into the streaming business. And so a lot of these films used to be on Netflix, but um, HBO Max is now, you know, part of Warner Media. Um, and so they've got a lot of their old titles now access to those titles. Um, so, you know, I think that the streaming is going to become very competitive. And so they're going to be able to, you know, be putting more films out there to sort of try to compete with everybody else. I see, I see. 
All right, so uh, I think we're on number number six. So number six is the 1938 version of A Christmas Carol. I don't think you could have a holiday list without having that uh, Dickens classic on there. Um, I, I mean, I, I think you just can't uh, forget about Scrooge and Tiny Tim. And um, we've paired this one with Wise Man Brewery um, and their Merry World Breakfast Stout, um, which undoubtedly brings peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Um, so it's a cure for any Scrooge. Well, by far, this is this is like my must see Christmas movie every, every season. I, I love A Christmas Carol. Um, fun fact, when, when I was in uh, middle school, I, I was actually a, an, an actor. I, I was in school plays and my um, my grandmother, I played the piano. She was a real she really big on 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 the arts. And um, I was in A Christmas Carol actually at the Winston-Salem Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum for the entire community. And I played Scrooge. And um, this was back when I was probably 12, 12 years old. Um, but I absolutely, I love Charles Dickens, first of all. I mean, he, he's just incredible, but this is by far um, one of my favorite movies and a must watch. Now, you know, I'm a fan of the, the remake that they made last year for, for FX. Have you, have you seen the remake of A Christmas Carol that they did for FX about a year ago? No, so it was, a, it was just made for the channel FX? It it was it, it was it was just original programming for the channel. I think you could find it on Hulu this year again. Um, it's it's a little bit darker, and um, you know FX they sort of put their spin on it. Um, but if you're a fan of A Christmas Carol, I think you'd be a fan of 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 of, of that version as well. But that's actually available on FX, and you can get it through uh, through Hulu. Um, so what's what's uh, number five? Uh, so number five is The Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, had to have an animated on the list. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's sort of a combined Halloween and Christmas film. And um, we think it has a little bit more Christmas spirit. And we've paired it with Foothills and their seasonal frostbite black IPA. Uh, so it's not too light, not too dark, um, just with a healthy amount of bite, which is sort of what this film is. Um, and this one's uh, available on Disney Plus. Um, and uh, just the art, you know, the, the art in this film is just, you know, it's just so fun to watch and it's so creative. And um, it just sort of rounds out this list with a, with a um, sort of a different, different holiday film. No, I, I really like it. It's another Tim Burton um, as, as well. And um, it just seems like the animation and some of the art that he puts in all his films are, are just tremendous. And um, I, I can recall my sister actually being scared of, 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 of this movie when it originally came out. But um, it's, it's a really, really, really great film. Um, so number, um, number four. Number four is, is one one that you'd probably, most people would probably have on their list, Miracle on 34th Street. Um, this, I mean, this is just conveys holiday spirit and makes the most hardened non-believer think that Santa Claus might just be real. Um, and, and we kind of thought the same thing and we paired it with Bobby Boy Bakery. They, you know, who does this phenomenal, you know, creations that you don't, don't even look like it's something that you would eat. And they're just, you bite in and it's just it melt in your mouth. And so it kind of was just an, an automatic pairing. Yeah, M Miracle on 34th Street was um, always a favorite in my house growing up. I, I grew up with my grandparents. And so my grandmother would, would watch this uh, religiously. And, and so I've, I've seen it um, a m many times. I just recently met um, John Bobby, who is the, the owner of Bobby Boy Bakery. And you're right, I follow them on Instagram. If you don't follow Bobby Boy Bakery, you go follow them on Instagram, but I'm, you know, fair warning. If, if you follow them on Instagram, you're going to find yourself at the, the, the bakery quite often because the pictures they post are incredible. And um, one Saturday they, they put up a, um, like a cheese steak or something that they had came up with. And I'd been thinking about it, Lauren, all day long. And I finally got up there that day and um, they were completely sold out. So that's the other disclaimer. Um, they, they sell out fast because they've got some really popular products, but um, I, I was happy to see, Bobby Boy Bakery made it made it onto your onto your list. And again, this one's available through Amazon or Apple, correct? Uh -huh. All right. What is uh, number four? So number four, we didn't put Die Hard on the list, um, but we thought 
we needed something sort of in that vein. So we um, added In Bruges, um, which is sort of that, not necessarily a Christmas film, but takes place during Christmas holidays. Um, and it's, you know, dark, sometimes hard to watch, pretty violent, um, but it's a black comedy and um, it pairs well with Finnegan's Wake, the, you know, one of the only authentic Irish restaurants in town. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Finnegan's as well. I, I, um, they do a peanut butter and jelly with bacon sandwich that is, that, that is to die for. Um, this was one, Lauren, I, how did, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I had, when I saw this one on your list, and I am a Colin Farrell fan, um, I've seen a lot of his movies, I actually had never even heard of this movie. So did it, did it go straight? Did it skip the silver screen or how, how did, when did it, when did it come out? Um, it came out, I don't have the date in front of me, in, in the 2000s, the decade at some, and I, and I think it, it, um, it would have been the perfect art house cinema film that had Aperture been open, like we would have for sure played it. So I'm not sure where then, because we weren't open at the time that would have played locally, but it definitely was, you know, made the rounds, um, really well reviewed, just a sort of a, it, was, it is a classic art house cinema film. And that's well, why and if you, I'm on the list. Well, and if you're a Colin Farrell fan, um, go check this out. This is on my list now for this weekend. So um, because I, I never even heard of the movie. So I'm gonna make sure I go check that out. And that's available on Amazon and Apple as well. So all right, we're getting into the top three here. I think we're actually uh, on number two. I think we miscounted at some point. Did I? Oh, okay. All right. So we're already in the top three. In Bruges is the, the number three film. What's uh, number two? So number two is not a film that was in theaters. It was on TV, but it's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, I think you could watch it every year. Um, it's, you know, Rudolph is, is a magical character and, you know, the song, the music is wonderful and he's, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's, I think the one Christmas movie that you can't not love. Um, and we paired it with Camino who, you know, similar, like they're one of the best coffee shops in town, always so great to, um, to us, you know, being across the street. Um, so we just think it's a perfect pairing to cuddle up with Rudolph. Yeah, I like Camino a lot too. Um, when I was living downtown, that was, you know, if, if not Cranky's, then definitely Camino. Um, those are my two go-to spots in the morning. And I definitely love Rudolph. I, I didn't know though, you, you just shared something with me I didn't know. I didn't know the movie was never in the, the, the theater, though. It was always just a television-made movie? Yeah, th this version, um, which is the sort of the, I don't know, it's not animated. It's like, um, it's puppet, you know, it's, it's not, um, I don't know what the artwork is called. But it, yeah, it was not, it was on TV. And I, you know, it aired on TV every year. I don't, and I don't think, I think that ended at some point. Um, you can, you can, yeah. buy, you can buy it on iTunes now. Yeah. I used to watch it coming up as a kid all the time. And um, my, my daughter enjoyed it as well. And, and I, I'm going to be honest with you. I enjoyed it because coming up in school, I was always a little bit different and I, I'm sure my audience doesn't believe that, but, but yeah, I was always a little bit different. And th this was a movie um, growing up as a child that always made me feel a little bit more comfortable about being different. And um, I just, I think it's got a great, you know, obviously it's a great Christmas movie, but even beyond that, it's just got a really good, good, strong message. All right. So number one, what is the, the number one movie that everyone has to see this Christmas season? So number one um, is a film I just watched. I watched the day it came out. It's a new film called Happiest Season. It's on Hulu. Um, and it has Kristen Stewart and Mackenzie Davis in it. And um, it's a romance and um, about going home. And it's a comedy um, with all, also with Mary Steenburgen, who I think is totally underutilized. Um, and it's just charming and heartwarming. And we've paired it with Dewey's, um, which, you know, you know, they make the best cakes. So why not? And, and there's a bunch of pop-up Dewey's locations right now because it's Christmas season. So um, plenty of plenty of places where you can find some Dewey's cake. And I, I in fact, a really good friend of mine, um, his son is selling Moravian sugar cake as a fundraiser. So we 
we just got ours. So we, we made sure we got ours this season. I was not familiar with this movie, The Happiest Season, as well. Um, and when I looked at your outline, it looks like a fairly newer movie. Did it just come out recently, like maybe in the last year or so? Or? No, it just came out maybe the end of November. Yeah, I think the end of November. Um, so and it just brand new. And went straight to Hulu? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is this will be one I've got to check out as well. I mean, it looks just looking at the the actual imagery of it. It looks like a very, very fun movie. I'm actually having my daughter over this Saturday. We're going to be watching Christmas movies all day. And we're going to take some of the ones that you've got on your list. um, Because I think especially some of the older movies would not be films that she's ever seen because she's she's only 17. And then this happiest season, um, I think I might reserve as well for us to check out on, on, on Saturday. And I'm thinking about doing a show for my audience next week where I bring my daughter on after we've watched some of these movies. And then my daughter and I are going to talk a little bit about him and get her reaction to, to what she thought about, thought about these movies. Lauren, I really appreciate you helping us compile this list. And um, I think it's so cool how you actually compare the movie up with a restaurant that's located here in your backyard as well. Um, we're going to make sure if you follow us on YouTube, if you're a subscriber to the YouTube channel, this show will be available on YouTube. But we're going to actually drop some clips in for the actual movie so you can check that out so if you're just listening to this on the radio go check out the youtube channel and you'll see a little bit more of a comprehensive version of the interview that you just heard um we'll also if you follow us on facebook and some other places we'll also also um um, put up a list of the actual movies that lauren just highlighted along with the restaurant pairings um that she shared as well and lauren again tell them one more time how can they um access your virtual streaming platform that aperture has launched so it's, everything's on our website, aperturecinema.com. And we've been putting together these sort of restaurant, um, we've done some brewery pairings. We've done this sort of since the summer. And all of these lists are on our website under dinner and a movie. Um, so if you you know run out of, see all of these 10 films and, and want some more, um, there are plenty where this came from. And you guys make sure you support Aperture and um, keep, a, keep a close eye on what's happening um, in our community. Aperture will be reopening soon. And I want my audience to be the first ones in line to not only support Lauren, but support her staff um, that, that have, you know, struggled through this unprecedented time. Um, and again, any of these movies, one more shameless plug for our sponsor, JNS Cafeteria, any of these movies go with great food from JNS. So uh, pick up a holiday meal at JNS Cafeteria, 5835 Samet Drive. Make sure you grab one of these movies off the list. And until next time, y'all stay locked in. <laughs>